Tom, if you can hear me, give me a thumbs up, please. I can hear you. Okay. All right, good. Thank you. Peter, you're good as well. Good. can't see flip but you can see his fly here the uh, yeah, we got, we got flip, flip Sarah Goose with, with us tonight, tonight from Lafayette Lafayette let me get my, my phone where I'm gonna get feedback and flip flip drove up to lead us in a couple of phone flies uh, several of us went down to their tying session oh, I guess two months ago now yeah. and we tied a couple of these and really had a good time so we asked flip he volunteered to drive up tonight and lead us in this triangle bug uh, Jim Johnson, I know Catch has used it a, a bit. I've used it some, and we've, we've really done well with it. And then a uh, foam, more of a bass size foam popper that will tie after that. So Correct. Flip, we uh, let me let me pull it up where y'all can see Flip. There we go, face, and then we, we're back on your fly, Flip. So no offense, we just we're just focusing on the fly. Right. Good. <laughs> Good. We have a face for it here. Do I? I can hear you. What? It passed out a tail material. No tail material. No, no. Uh, well, I'll do that. Okay. okay. All right, Flip. Over to you then. All right. Um, <clears throat> like Bill said, we're going to do two flies tonight. The fir first one's going to be the triangle bug. Um, it's not a not a hard hard fly to tie. In fact, I always say it's a five minute fly because if you have all your materials ready to go. You can literally tie these in less than five minutes. Um, I tied them about two, three or four months ago, and I don't do a lot of freshwater fishing, but I went out to a pond in Lafayette and caught a bunch of little small brim on them, which was pretty good for me because usually the, the uh, I don't do that well when I go freshwater fishing. I'm not a freshwater fisherman. Uh, but I gave some out that night to catch and, uh, uh, well, to catch. And then we tied them uh, a couple of weeks later. And, and apparently the guy, some of the guys here in your club have been using them and uh, doing pretty well. 
And the, the purpose or the, or the reason for the bug being tied the way it is, at least from what I've read, is the guy was tired of having small fish swallow a small fly. So he made this with this extra wide head to keep it from a fish from being able to totally swallow it. And then having the, uh, the associated problem of trying to get the hook out of the fish. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started on this, on the triangle bug. Everybody has a hook, right? Okay. Um, oh. I'm still passing out. Okay. All right. The, uh, the fellow that, that one of the videos I read, the guy, the guy said he actually ties these large, big and larger, like up to like an inch to use for bass. So I would say, you know, the, the, there's no limit to how big you can tie these things. Um, although most of the videos I see, they're, they're uh, really smaller, you know, like the ones we're going to do tonight. Um, the hook I'm using is, uh, in my case, it's an Orvis Orvis fly hook. Uh, it's a 2x long uh, dry fly hook. And the reason I, I actually have some 3x long at home. The reason I use the 2x long is because the foam that's pre cut. I'm going to try to show you all this. Let's see. Let me get my tweezers. If you can, if you can see this, let's see. But if you use a three X long, uh, you have too much, too much of your hook sticking out the rear end of the fly, and if you use a one X, you don't have enough hook. So two X seemed to be the best size hook for me. Okay. The foam itself, is two two millimeter uh, craft foam, which you can buy at Walmart or Hobby Lobby or uh, any of those types of places. And I'm try to put this where you can see it. This is my this is my pattern that I made. It's uh it's, it's one inch long and three eighths inch three eighths inch across in the center okay, to make your little triangle shaped or diamond shaped piece. And when I cut them, let me find one that's not bent. I tend to cut them a little bit oversized. I will try to show you that. I can't. So if, if you if you can see that, mm -hmm. but when I cut when I cut the foam, I cut it maybe a thirty second or a sixty fourth outside the confines of my little pattern, okay. and that seems to produce a, a a piece of foam that that when you apply it on the hook, it comes out just right for me. Okay. What'd you make your pattern out of? <laughs> a piece of sticky tab note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, high tech. All right. Well, let's get started. Get our hooks, hook, put your hook in your vise. What's that? All right, get your hook in your vise and <clears throat> start your thread. I, I use uh, the 140. I like the 140 thread for. Most of the time I do, uh, it's less prone to break, you know. And we're gonna start just behind the eye and lay down a pretty good bed of thread on the hook shank. Go back to just about where the barb is. I don't like that, I don't know if you can see that. And then 
bring your thread in, in wide open loops toward the front and then toward the back, kind of give some, uh, some purchase on this hook shank so that the foam, when you glue it on there, it doesn't uh, rotate. Actually, there's a company, and I'm, I'm not sure who it is. Uh, I don't even know that I would go to the trouble of, do, of buying them, but there's a company out there that actually makes hooks that are similar to the, uh, the popper hook that, that Bill gave to you, except in, in the case, in this case, instead of the bent portion of the hook being vertical, it is horizontal. It would be like this. It was, and, it, and the guy that was tying these in that video uh, claimed these things were made for the triangle bug. Now, I don't know where you get those, but I find that if you put a good enough bed of thread on here, there's really not a lot of trouble with the, the foam twisting on the hook shank. Okay. So is everybody about caught up with me? All right. First thing we're gonna put on is our uh, marabou. And what you wanna do is, uh, you don't need a whole lot. Um, anybody can see. You got about this much area around. Okay. All right, you can see about how much I have there. Okay. You don't need you don't need a whole lot. This is obviously is a very small fly. And what we're going to do is, is cut it, or we're going to tie it in about one hook length or one hook shank, the straight part of your hook. So in my case, it's going to be about like this. Okay. Once you get your tie-in point, transfer your marabou to your other hand, put it on top of the hook and put a couple of loose wraps. And then if you can take your thumb and kind of twist it on there to, to get it down on down the sides of your hook. How far up do you wrap the marabou? I'm going to wrap it all the way, well, not all the way to the eye, but about one, one hook eye before. And what I do, I was waiting for everybody to catch up, but what I'll do is take this and twist it, twist, twist the marabou in your hand, then take your thread and just go across it like this. Okay. Maybe two hook eyes behind the uh, the actual hook eye. <laughs> and when you cut your marabou, I always tend to want to cut with my scissors coming in from the front of the hook. And the reason I do that, because when you cut it like that, it tapers the material. And it'll taper it toward the front rather than having a blunt square cut. How's everybody come? We good? Okay. Yeah. If uh, if you still have your little piece of midge flash that I gave you. It didn't didn't fly away. You want to fold it in half, and then fold it in half 
one more time. I don't know if you can see if you can see it. I've got it folded in half, and then I folded it back in half one more time. Okay. And, and now, what is that? Is it the, the midge flash? That's a little bitty fine thing. It's a little bitty fine. Yeah, it's a fine. Fine flash. I believe you gave me one, but I can't see it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply it just to the top side of the marabou. And catch it with my thread. Do you tie it in all the double? It should be it should be like four pieces. I mean, you could put more. I, I don't I don't really like a lot of flash on any of my flies, to be honest with you. Do you need another piece? Okay. I'll let everybody catch up there. You want it the length of the marabou or? Uh, or maybe a little bit longer. I don't know if you can see. Okay. All right, how's everybody doing? Don't put too much, don't put too much glue on just yet. I just put a little bit, but uh, you want it to dry. So if, you, if it's still wet, just kind of grab it with your fingers like this and it'll dry immediately on your fingers. <laughs> now, all right, everybody have a bodkin? A bodkin? If you don't, I, you can use a toothpick. I have some toothpicks up here. As far as the glue, we have got glue back here. Uh, anybody got? You, is that super glue? Or? Yes, it is. And I have, I have a couple of them here. If y'all want to use these? Buy these. Yeah, this is this is. This is <clears throat> This one, you got a little bit of the bottle, you get the rest of it. Yeah. Who else needs to take it? Can we just put some on the top of the bottle? You don't get around. Oh, okay. Yeah. I just got it. Where's Mike at? 
Bill, should I move on or wait for Mike or? Which is last year. Okay. All right. All right. Bring bring your thread back about two two hook eyes behind the the eye of the hook, and then get your rubber legs. I like these. I like these types of rubber legs, the round rubber, um, for this fly, more more than I do the silly legs. Um, it's just my preference. I don't, I don't know that it matters. But what what we're going to do is take your silly legs, take both of the silly legs, place them on top of your hook shank, like this. And then we're going to make cross wraps. The silly legs or the round ones? The, the rubber legs, I'm sorry, the round rubber. So make, make two wraps in one direction. Then try to get them spaced so that they're about even on each side. Can everybody see that? Everybody about caught up? Yeah, so what we're gonna do after you put your two one way, you're gonna grab the opposite side. And I know you can't see that, but. I'm gonna make some cross wraps in the opposite direction. And you wanna wind up with it looking something like like that. So it's doing a figure eight on top. Yes. Yes, sir. Kind of like you're tying on a pair of dumbbell eyes. Actually, when I first started tying these, I wouldn't even tie my legs in. I would just put them in position. And at the moment I glued my foam and was about to squeeze the foam together from the top and the bottom, I would actually move the legs in position. But I just find it's a lot easier to make a couple of wraps. They don't have to be tied in really firm, just enough to keep them on the hook shank and keep them from not falling off. All right, everybody's got their legs on? Not quite. No? All right. How far out should they extend? How far do they extend? Like um, the, the piece that I have is really long. It's dangling way down. Do you cut it like an inch or two? On either, yeah, coming out? About, about an inch. They, they all have silly legs. Uh, that's oh, I see. Yeah. Trying to find something so, for, yeah, for Peter. You have full length silly legs, so you yeah. can uh, trim, trim it back a little bit. See that? Okay. Can you see this this piece of foam? Yeah. Okay. I got. Okay. Thank you. Okay. This piece of foam is three eighths of an inch. Got it. That'll give you some scale. And yeah, that helps. Thank 
This, um, this, this is only, this screw is only to lock the place if you don't want to turn this back. But if you don't want to turn this back, so, so then for special tension, we tighten up this first one and two of the first one. This is this one here. All right, everybody have the legs uh, in place? All right, well, let's get our foam. And what I want to do is take your foam and fold it in half. Just like this. I don't know if you can, can you see that? Okay. Fold it in half and just squeeze it. And then once you let it go, there'll be a line across the front of it. Let's see. There'll be a line across the front of it. And what you want to do is take your bodkin, or in my case, I have a, uh, a toothpick, and I'm just going to punch a hole right about as close to the center as I can on that piece of foam. Can you all see that? I, I can. And you don't need a big hole in it because the head of that hook is pretty small. All right. Now take, take your thread, run your thread back to where the marabou is tied in and just let it dangle. Then you're gonna put your foam, punch, punch that uh, the eye of the hook through that hole you put into your foam. Everybody there. Okay. Now, next thing I do, you're gonna take the bottom of it like this. Take your thread and make a couple of loose wraps. Doesn't have to be tight just to hold it in place. And if it, if it starts to twist, then twist it back into position. Okay, so, so you wrap your thread around the, the point that's underneath, is that what you see? Yes, sir. Just the, just the portion underneath. <clears throat> and the, the tie-in point should be directly in front of where your uh, marabou starts. Oh, 
Doesn't need to be tied in real tight, just just enough to hold it in place. I wet my brain on super glue after all dried up and I opened it the package. Really? We got plenty. We got plenty. Okay, everybody caught up? <clears throat> all right. Yeah. Um, Having a super glue with a brush it comes in handy uh, if you have that. Okay, so <clears throat> we're going to take take our glue. You don't need to put a lot on it here because when you squeeze this, you squeeze it too hard, you can your fingers are going to glue to the foam, <laughs> and then uh, you might tear up the fly. So what I like to do is take my super glue, try to get some on the hook shank on the, and if you can push the brush so that it's underneath. Yes, sir. You try not to get it on your legs. You don't want to glue your legs together right now. <laughs> like I did. All right. Bill, what part is nails for? Or will that kill it? It won't stick. All right. Here. Got be got to be some form of super. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead. I've got the glue on mine. I'm gonna go ahead and and finish it. But I want y'all to see. Okay. Uh, with, after you get your glue on there, push your foam down. And then position your legs the way you want them. If you want them splayed out to the back, you can push them in position and then lightly squeeze this together. Doesn't take long and it's it's stuck. Can y'all see that? I don't know. Is what we see in here the same thing? Yeah. Seeing on the TV screen. Except the computer's frozen for some reason. Fortunately, this is what's being zero. Okay. Right. I'll go. I'll, I'll go around. Let's see. I 
All right, well, uh, I guess everybody's pretty close. So let's, uh, to finish it up, all you have to do is, is obviously make a few wraps of thread um, around the rear of the phone. Just, just uh, clean it up, watch your legs. About twenty or thirty seconds. Okay, but this is what time. This is what time. I got you. Okay. Because on that one, it's going out to Zoom and back to the computer. Cool. All right. Anyway, once you get the uh, foam cleaned up at the rear with your wraps, just do a whip finish. I don't understand what you mean cleaned up with your wraps. Just bring your, uh, make enough wraps to. to oh, on, 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 both, on both the top and the bottom. Yeah, on the triangle. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Like this. Yeah, just 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 clean up the uh, the back of the foam here. In other words, get get enough wraps on it to so you can make a couple of half inches. Yeah, Yeah, 
was three, I right? got three. Super glue didn't hold. No, I thought they were only Sometimes it happens. I have that happen. Yeah. I'm trying to say, I'm sorry to use that Zappa gap stuff. It seems to work a little better. Yeah. Super glue. I don't know. I've had all super glue not. That's crazy. I've never had an intro like that. Yeah. If you use Zappa glue, Zappa gap, Zappa gap with one of the other. All right, y'all. No problems out there. Jeff, you're finished good. Peter, you're you're good. That's a great looking fly. I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah we've uh, like I say, I've, I've, Jim and I have used it, and we've really done well with it. Jeff, yours is finished. Mark, good. And uh, Tom, good time. All right, everybody. We're going to go on home to the. About the uh, phone. Um, yeah, what we're going to probably need to do is uh, is cut it. Okay. Let's cut it with scissors. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Let me let me make sure. Yeah, they can they can cut. We can cut this in half. Okay, cut it in half is what you yeah. right. Now, those of you I mailed materials to, you'll need to use your super glue. I couldn't pre-glue them together because it was too thick in the envelope. My post office rejects that stuff. 
So you'll want to glue, get some super glue and glue those two layers together for the popper. That be enough, maybe. Bill, the hooks you got are size six, right? Mustang. Are they longer than this? Uh, they're not as long as that. Well, I think that's the same size. I, I, I glanced at somebody's and. Uh, yeah. Bill, when we glue them together, does it matter if the green's on top or the brown's on top? Better way. Better way. All right, say again, Jeff. Does it matter if the green's on top or the brown's on top? Um, it doesn't matter because you're going when you put them on the fly, you're going to have the uh, green on top. Yeah, the green's going to be to the outside, but just sandwich this with just one green and one brown. I sent you two of each. Just saying with one green and one brown. I was giving you a hard time. And you need you need to actually once you get that glued together. That was a Jeff Ferguson question. You need to cut a strip about at least two inches. So say, to be safe, say three inches long and three eighths of an inch. Now I've cut their strips. They've got two strips. Just, oh, not, okay. just not glued together. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good, good. Yeah, good. they're like two and a quarter inches yeah. long or something. I just I just buy the uh, foam from uh, Hobby Lobby. In, in this case, the green foam was sticky back foam, and I put the brown foam uh, on, stuck it to it, and then I cut it square, and used this to cut my to cut my strips from. And the, the sticky the sticky back foam makes it a lot easier than trying to glue a whole piece of foam with super glue. If you're like me and already have some sheets of foam, Walmart sells that uh, 3M77 spray adhesive. Yes. And it does a great job to spray it. Yes. Yeah. All right, so we need to give them some time at home to to glue this. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Okay. I'm good. I'm glued. Good, Peter. Good, Jeff. Good. Oh, yep. All right, Tom. I'm good. Okay. All right. That means everybody's ready? Everybody's ready. Yeah. All right. All right. This is what we're going to tie. Yeah, it's just a little foam uh, frog. Um, I tie them in a bunch of different sizes, size, uh, mainly size two uh, down to a size eight. The one we're going to tie tonight is a size six. The one I have in my vice, yes, we locked up. Okay. Anyway, there's a size six. What are the two saddle hackles and one marabou, or one saddle hackle and one marabou? Um, one saddle hackle is probably good. Hackle? Yeah. Yeah. I, don't yeah. Know. I also <laughs> the tail on this fly is going to be marabou. Okay. But I also make one with. Uh, calf tail, if, if you can see that, to mimic, I guess, a frog, frog legs. Are, are, are y'all seeing this? Oh, okay. 
Okay. All right. This is just some calf tail. Um, and then I also do some with, uh, with bucktail. Okay. But in tonight's case, we're going to do marabou. Okay. And I also didn't put any eyes on these. I usually put eyes. I just didn't have any small enough. So let's go ahead and put our hook in our vise. And uh, again, I'm going to use my uh, 140, uh, my 140 uh, chartreuse thread to do most of the time. And I'll talk. I'll tell you a little bit. Uh, generally, when I go to tie the waistline, this is what I'm calling the waistline, this portion of the fly, I might use 210 for that. You don't, you don't need to put as many wraps, but you can compress that foam to get that, to get that uh, again, the, what I call the waistline. But you can do it with 140, okay? Uh, do we cut this piece? No, leave it. Leave it just like it is. Yeah, leave it just like it is. Okay. All right. So let's start again. Let's start our thread. Start our thread behind the eye of the hook. All right. Let's see. And bring your thread almost to where the bend starts. And I'll usually go back and forward a couple of times again to kind of get a fairly rough surface on that hook shank to help with the adhesion of your foam. Plus you're gonna have a uh, marabou on there, similar to the way we did the uh, triangle bug. So bulk it up a little bit and help it to uh, adhere. Also, I usually, I'll put, uh, I know, I believe you all only have uh, olive marabou. Um, so that, that's what I'm gonna use tonight. But it, you can put two tones if you want. Um, if you see, can see the bottom of this is a yellow or you can put a white and then the top Kind of the mimic of uh, uh, the belly of a bullfrog or a small frog. Right, let me go ahead and get some marabou here. All right. Everybody have their marabou? I'm going to put a piece of marabou on here that's about one and a half, maybe even two times the length of the hook shank. Okay. Once you get it to the size you want, measure it off with your working hand, transfer it to your weak hand, put it back on top of your hook shank and make a couple of loose wraps. You don't need, they don't need to be really tight. And the reason I want to do that is because at this point, again, I want to try to take my thumb. I don't know if y'all are seeing this. I want to take my thumb and kind of work this marabou down around the size of the hook shanks. Are you, 
Are y'all following along with me? I'm, I'm having trouble with when I'm watching yeah, this. About 30 second delay or so. Yeah. Yeah, you're, you're good. Good. All right. Once again, if you can take and twist, twist your marabou. Put some, yeah, you put loose wraps first, take your thumb, trying to push it down around the sides of your hook shank to spread it around. Then after you get it spread around, put a couple of tight wraps. Then you want to twist your marabou and then work your thread around towards the front of your hook. You want to tie it all the way to, over the bend? Over the bend, but, but not, all, not all the way up against the eye. You don't want it right to the eye. Maybe a, a hook eye behind. And again, when you, I tend, when I cut, I try to cut in the same direction as my hook shank so you get that tapered cut. And once you get it cut up, just work your way back and kind of clean, clean up that marabou on your hook shank. You want to hand out some flash bill? Yeah, sure. Um, I, uh, I, 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 I forgot about it. I thought that Robert Hughes, because he's he watched him. He watched him all the time. I want to give you know a couple of pieces. Yeah. Go ahead, take them off. Now I've got some bigger flash over here. I want to use that. Well, that's, fine. that's fine. That's and it, fine. And it's it's. Uh, Color All right, everybody got some flesh? Yep. All right. All right, let's take our flesh and fold it around the thread underneath. About how many strands? Um, I, I, I think about three or four on each side would be perfect. 
I don't, again, I don't like a lot of flash. Okay. But once you get your flash wrapped around your hook, bring it down to the top of the hook shank, just make a couple of wraps. And then what you want to do, if you can see what I'm doing, is kind of grab half of it on each side of the marabou, pull it toward the rear, kind of like this. And I like to I like to angle it down a little bit when I tie that in. And then wrap back to your marabou and your flash is now locked in. Did you start with your, your flash at, uh, at what point on the hook? Oh, maybe a quarter inch in front of the, 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 the marabou. Okay. Open in front of the marabou. Yeah, tie, once you tie it in on top of the hook shape, bend it. Brings down on each side of the marabou. Oh, it's out of the way. It's been a Hello? We lost picture. Yeah, no picture. No audio or picture. Hey, just give me a, my phone my now. Phone. Lost. Are y'all seeing the video back yet? Yep. Yep. Good. That's good. All right, Flip. We can move on. Back on. Yeah. Okay. Good. Good. All right. You should have a saddle hackle. What I want to do is tie it in from the tip. So grab it by the tip and then stroke your feathers back like this. I should go on. I should go on, Bill. Okay. All right. 
if you can see, I have this with the curve, the curvature of the feather up. You're gonna tie your tackle feather in just in front of the marabou. Tie in the tip. Yes, sir. If you stroke those, you stroke the uh, feather backwards. Okay. You can get just to the tip. Which way to concave side? Concave up. Uh, no, I'm sorry, concave down. You want okay. the curvature of the feather. The shiny side of your feather up. Yeah. Now, if the hackle you have is really small at the end, you might want to tie it in a little bit further off. You see how wide this tackle is? Right, once you got this tied in, you can tie, you can do some uh, some half hitches and tie that off. And cut off your thread. Because you're not gonna you're not gonna need it again until you get the foam on there. Okay, so you bring your thread forward. Yeah, once you get the, the hackle tied in. Just bring your thread forward, you know, to the end of where the hackle is. Do some, do some, uh, you know, whip finish. A couple of half hitches, tie it off. Whereabouts should you tie it off? Just after, uh, anywhere, as oh, long okay. as, as long as you have your hackle tied in all the way. The, the tip of your hackle. Yeah, okay. Thank you. All right. Once you get your hackle in, if you want to put a dab, small dab of glue just on the hackle, make sure it doesn't come out when you go to start to tug on it. You can. And what we're going to do is going to we're going to palmer this hackle in, but I want you to try to stay in the same spot as close as you can. Don't bring it forward very much, okay? If you can see what I'm doing, I'm almost going on. To, I'm going on top of it. I'm going to, I'm just going to put it, I, sh I should, I, I shouldn't have cut it off, but it doesn't matter. When I get to that point, I'm going to go ahead and tie, tie it back in with the thread. I, that was my mistake. I was thinking too far ahead. Yeah, you can if you want. Yeah, I wish somebody had said something when I told you to cut it. I thought you had a trick. No. I thought it was totally magic, huh? I was just thinking too far ahead. Then bring your thread back to 
once you get your once you get your hackle wrapped in, you want it you want it to be as close to the the marabou as you can. You don't want to go too far forward with it. Okay, so bring your thread back there. Yes, sir. Wraps with your hackle. You hackle. Uh, just do it until you get what you think is a good collar around there. You don't want it to be too sparse. You don't. It does, but it doesn't need to be too thick. All right. I apologize for cut, making y'all cut that thread. I got ahead of myself. Anyway. That's a good exercise. Yeah. Keep, as if we broke the thread. Keeping y'all on your toes. All right. So at this point, make some half inches, tie your thread off. Now cut it. All right. All right, everybody got uh, their hackle tied in? And I wouldn't put any glue on there right now. All right, what we're gonna do next, I want you to take your piece of foam and fold it with the green side out, fold it in half. If you want to make a green frog, if you want to make a brown frog, fold it the other way. Okay. And again, squeeze it. So you get an idea where that center point is. You're going to take a, I, tell, I use a toothpick and try to go in the very center, close as you can. Push it all the way through your foam. Oh, yeah. We have to get this set up first. Mm -hmm. 
All right. If you have a bodkin and you use a bodkin, you, 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 you're, you're going to have to push this foam over the hook shank. And if yours is like mine, it's kind of uh, bulky because of the uh, material, which is what we want. We want it to be bulky, but you have to push the foam over that hook shank. Which, which, With the, the, well, it dep outside. depends on the frog you want, but uh, you probably want the, the green foam facing the rear of your hook. Okay. Do that now? Yes. And go ahead and, and slowly work that foam back over the hook shank. But don't get carried away because what you'll do is you'll push it over the over your hackle. And you want to push it all the way back to the hackle. Then you can, if you take your fingers like, like I'm doing, can you see what I'm doing? You see how there's kind of a, and I don't know if you can see it, right here, there's a gap between the back of my foam and the hackle, okay? So I want to hold it this way and slowly push it back. All right, to where it starts to mash that hackle down. All right, now at this point, get some I got some. I've been putting four, four silly legs on this size. The, uh, when I do it a size two, I'll usually put six. Um, I don't guess, I don't know that it makes that much difference, but I'm gonna use four silly legs. But what you're gonna to need to do right now is bring your foam underneath like this, bring the top down, make sure the, the foam is up against that hackle, okay? Now, this is critical. When you get it to where you want it, squeeze it real hard. And you see what I'm doing? Squeeze it real hard, pull your foam off. And if you look, you can see the imprint of your hook. Can you see that? You can see the imprint of the hook. You can see where the hook eye is in the foam. So pull it off? Pull it off. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I can see where the, the eye of my hook on my foam is right here. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut it, but I'm not going to cut it square. I'm going to angle it. Let's see in this direction, and I'm gonna cut it right at the tip of that hook eye. So that I get an angle like that. Can you see that? Oh, it's going down just a little bit. Turn it now, turn it forward, forward, forward. Turn around, forward, forward. Yeah, turn it towards us. Turn it, okay. Thumb down, yeah, there you go. Okay. So which way is it angled? I'm trying to get it over that white. Oh, yeah. The green, the green extends further out than the brown. Okay, not where the hook eye was. Do the same thing on the top. And the reason I want that angle is so that when you put your foam together, you get. get a little, like a popper head. You can see that. Okay. Yeah. Once you get it cut, once you get it cut, the length. And this is where 
I'm probably, uh, you can use the 140. I, I usually will put, use 210 to do the next step, the next tying step. It doesn't matter. 140 will work just fine. All right. So you want to get you? All right. So you went to the end of the hookup, to the far end of the hookup. To the far end of the hookup. Okay, got it. Yeah. Okay. Because you, once you, when, when you fold that foam down to glue it, you can move it back behind the hook eye. I'd rather have it a little bit longer than too short. Okay. Okay. Right at the tip of the hook eye. If you see the imprint in your phone, cut it right at that tip. Everybody with us? Now, I want to take some super glue and put a dab of super glue. If you want to grab the, the marabou, move it out with your hand, your fingers, put a little bit right where the super glue is. Uh, I'm sorry, right where the marabou begins. And then you push your foam back into position. Okay. Who needs super glue? All right, once you get that super glue on there, then the, then the foam is locked onto it. Now, what you can do is you can pull it forward like this and look and see if you have to do any trimming. You can, but you don't want to trim it too short. In my case, I'm going to take off maybe a sixteenth of an inch at the most. And if you can see, when I fold it together, I'm still, I am still covering the eye of my hook, I'm just barely covering it, but I'm covering it. And I want it to be a little bit longer because when I tie it and glue it, I can push it back with my fingers like this to get it to where the eye is in the perfect position, okay? Everybody got their foam cut to their liking. All right. Now, I'm going to take some super glue. You want to definitely get some on the hook shank, on the thread wraps and the marabou. Get that kind of wetted up with the super glue. Then put a little bit on your foam. Don't need to overdo it on the foam. Doesn't need to be dripping because when you squeeze it, it's gonna come out. Okay. Now, what to do is take your rubber legs. And if you have, I should have said something when in the notes before, but if you have something like this, a clip, can you see that? Hair clip. All right. Bring your rubber legs. 
toward the rear of the fly. Take your rubber, your hair clip, clip them back like that. Everybody with me? Okay. How many rubber legs was it? How many? Yeah, like four? Four. Four. Okay. Then you push, push your foam together when do, as you're doing it, you want to look at the front of your fly and make sure the hook is centered from side to side and that you're not covering it with your foam. You're going to put your rump, your rump, your center legs on top of the hook? Yes, sir. Okay. Anybody need glue? Now, if you can see, my hook is my hook is sticking out an appropriate amount in front of the foam. It's centered from side to side. You might need to add a little bit more super glue if you didn't get it uh, stuck all the way to the rear. Take your time and squeeze it together, looking at each side of your, your frog. How long do you have to hold it? Uh, it doesn't take too long, 15 seconds maybe. How are we doing? Put your glue on. Please go. 
How long do we leave us to see? Um, I usually bring them back yeah. if they're long enough and cut them off about even with the marrow. Okay. Or maybe a little bit longer. You know, one thing about it, if they're too long, you can always cut them off. While you're when you're fishing, you can't add to them yeah. when you're fishing. And how about the, the flash of loose? I cut my flash a little bit behind the legs. Right. Yeah. 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 About halfway, midway between the, the front and the okay, rear. I'm just going to tie it up that way. Yeah. Okay. All right. Next thing we need to do is tie the, again, what I refer to as the waist of the waistline of the fly. And I'm going to go about halfway or a little bit in front of halfway, but not too much. Wait, what, what is that? I missed that. Okay. Um, can you see the the screen? Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, so we're gonna tie tie it back in again. Yeah. Tie it back in, tie it about halfway between the front of the fly and the rear of the, of the foam, front of the foam and the rear of the foam. If you want to go a little bit toward the front, that's okay. But not not too much. If you can see mine. It may be, it's not perfectly half. I'm not cutting it in half. It's a little bit forward of halfway. And I'm, I'm using uh, 210, but the 140 will work just fine. <clears throat> Once you get that little waistline portion of the, the foam, just whip finish that. And uh, having your super glue handy, you can take a little bit and just dab some on that, the waistline area of the. I'll usually apply this with a toothpick, but for time's sake, I'm just going to do it with the brush. I don't know that this is necessary for the, uh, for the fish, <laughs> but for the fishermen, we're gonna take some Sharpie pens and put some color on the top of the fly. 
kind of make it look like a frog. And I usually take a, a, blue sharp, a green Sharpie, make a couple of couple of blobs on the front, a couple in the back. Then I'll take a brown one, kind of go in the center. That, just to finish it up. Now, do they have eyes? Yes. Okay. I don't have any eyes. Um, are they stick on them? Uh, I think they are, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> I just didn't have any small enough uh, yeah, at home. Yeah, those are worse. Yeah, yeah, they are. That's what I use. That's what I use on the other ones. Uh, if you have your eyes, you can just put your eyes on the side. If anybody needs another eye, if you lost an eye. I lost my eye. Going on the side, or on the side. Uh, can you see them? Uh, let me hold on. Let me see if I is right here. Now, what I would do at home is I would use some uh, UV resin and put a little UV resin over the eye. And uh, and lock it in with that. Okay, I don't have any UV resin with me. I'm I'm just going to put a little bit of Sally Han Sally Hansen's on it. Does, does this does this thing peel off or something? Okay. No, it's it's a uh, once you get it off of the, the 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 piece of that's attached to it's got an adhesive on the rear of the eye. Yeah, right here. Cheryl, can I have a paper towel? If y'all can see that. Now the only the only other thing that I would probably do, and I, I do it on uh, most of them, is I will trim some of the uh, marabou off the bottom a little bit, and maybe like even with your hook shank. If you can see what I just did, I trimmed my marabou about even with the bottom of the hook. I don't care. This is 
Everybody caught up? Yes, sir. And I, like I said, I don't know if you heard, I, I said I, I will usually take my scissors and I'll trim some of that marabou off at the bottom to keep it from okay, floating too high in the water. All right. Our, our remote folks out there. Peter. Any questions? No. Questions? The, the, the great big one you had, I got from you down there. Uh -huh. Same way, right? Everything's the same. Yeah. Well, maybe I got your cheek plate. Jeff, you all good? Peter? This was a phenomenal class, really. Thank you so much. I love these flies. Great. Great. Mark? Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, Tom? Yes, thank you. Enjoyed it. All right. Well, great. We will say good night to y'all. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. It's great fly. Thank you. All right. Jeff says great job, Flip. Oh, thank you. I, I got it. Thank you, Flip. Thank you. <laughs>